So ONM, uh, there are a lot of companies which are focused right now on hooked up ONM. I have a few companies. ONM is, is a big, big issue once the plant is in. So you talk about a rooftop plant, um, it has a lot of access and management issues. You ONM on a rooftop plant is relatively easier from a security perspective, but from an access and from when you're designing the plant, you also have to have a certain set of safety factors. Now, when installing the plant, you will have a lot of safety harnesses and all of that happening. But you also have to make sure that when you're designing the complete EPC, you make sure to you ensure that the uh, access, the cleaning. Um, in fact, I'll give you a simple example. There was a, a client of mine, this was in my previous role. A client of mine, the guy who used to do the cleaning would just leave his pipe on top of the panel. And the client would wonder what is happening, why is the generation just dropping? So even a simple pipe across your panel will drop your generation by almost 50% and this would affect the entire string. So there is, there is a huge scope for it to be a more uh, streamlined, there are need, there's a need for process to come in. The reason what process will do is because everybody thinks that ONM may ah, be jayega, then panel saab karega, and nikal jayega. Lekin actually wo hai nahi. See, it, it might work for some places, in some places, it, again, it depends on the hardness of the water. Abhi aapne konsa borewell ka pani dala hai, uspe, what is your TDS, how, usme at the end of the day, you will have a huge pack, and if, wherever you are inclined of the panel, you will have a huge pack over there, which is affecting your generation. In fact, uh, there are, there is another plant that we had where there was not much distance. It was it was a very very reputed EPC. They hadn't kept much distance, so the ONM guys were being blamed. But because of the distance between the roof and the panels, the it degraded by almost twenty percent in the first first eighteen months. So there's a tremendous amount of uh, value that needs to be added at the ONM. Thing as well, it's not just ajao planning clean karo ek electrician bejo. So that is where a, a lot of companies are now coming in and that is where a lot of angst is also being created. Well, so that is also being addressed, but it's going to take its time. I would like to add something here. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, in terms of uh, number of people, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's possible in India because uh, still we do cleaning with hands. Uh, people come, uh, a lot of people in fact come and they cleaning, I guess on a daily basis. But in terms of uh, the uh, overall project, you see uh, there are three phases. One is your, I would say, initial phase where you kind of uh, bid for tenders, uh, uh, win projects, and then work on the initial part in terms of how you're going to develop the project. Second is your construction phase, and third is your OM phase, which is the larger phase. So I, I believe that all these phases are equally important. Uh, if you are having a very good plan, uh, I would say a bad one can, can, can destroy it, or if you have a bad plan, then the best of ONM companies cannot actually maybe uh, maintain it properly. Uh, so with regard to ONM, uh, I would say that in India, cleaning uh, what actually again Ritesh uh, pointed out is, is a very, very critical uh, factor. One, is, uh, one thing is that if you have just over modules, you have direct loss in power. Second is that in fact in our analysis, only field analysis, what we found that uh, if you measure the temperature between clean and empty modules, you will see a temperature drop uh, in preparation wise uh, in the empty modules. And as you know that uh, any increasing temperature will, will reduce its power. So we, again, uh, the owner actually was surprised why they are having loss in power even uh, when they clean the modules, but then when, <coughs> when I went and realized that they had cleaned only a part of, or maybe few strings only, the rest of the modules were strings, they still had dust over it, and they were operating at a higher temperature. And then definitely, uh, because of dust uh, in a rooftop environment, uh, though in a, in a ground mounted environment, it's still pretty easy to do cleaning and then uh, people, developers would ensure that or the owner's company would ensure that the models are cleaned on a regular basis. But in a rooftop environment, it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge and again, if you don't have the right owner company, you might be having models which are unclean for maybe months. And then it, it can lead to uh, other issues, as I was talking about, it can lead to something like hotspots. And hotspots can have, again, uh, temporary or permanent damage to the materials, which would again, lead to either performance loss or maybe safety issues or both. So again, as I told you that ONM again is a very critical component, a uh, very critical phase of, of uh, a PV plant. It's going to ensure that uh, even if you have a good PV plant, it will work for 25 years. Thanks, Rahul. 
So I'll just address the question that I initially asked that do you think India can have a manless plant and uh, in my opinion after hearing both your thoughts I feel the answer is kind of no from you. I think a few of the things which are driving this is primarily the cost of labor in India it's about 400 rupees a day in the US it's about 300 dollars uh, if the man has to come there that's one of the primary reason why. Second from the security point of view the reason why we need guards is because our law enforcement is not as strong as the law enforcement back in Europe or US where you call the sheriff and the person is caught. Third thing is we are not really ready today to believe in that technology although technology of the sorts of video analytics uh, which spots the person just through the analysis of the video feed or a fiber petroleum where there is fiber underground and you step on it and it's detected there is electric fence which can be used there are all of these technologies or even the microwave perimeter protection system which is available which today I think capex plus the lack of belief in the technology is causing uh, people not to really adopt it with regards to the point of module cleaning or the dust etc I think all of us have heard of a lot of companies which have come in today and have brought in robotics. We are, we are hearing about the Ecopia E4 which is a brushless, uh, waterless cleaning system which cleans every day. We have heard about uh, Culture which is a company again which does thermography plus module cleaning on a daily basis. Imagine the value that comes out of that. There is a company called Mirakai which is from Japan which is again into robotics and they have a tiny one which can be left on the roof and cleans on its own and comes back. So there are a lot of technologies available for module cleaning as well today in ONM. But again I think the cost difference is agar mera ek banda ja ke udar clean karta hai, 50 paise par module lagta hai, tum mere ko 2 lakh invest karne kyun bol ho? So this, this is the apprehension that we are seeing in the Indian market where people are looking at OPEX in the OPEX sense and the generation increase that you might see or the lack of module failures that you might see because of daily cleaning or the lack of water being used in the system which is at 1000 volts. These are kind of benefits which are actually available in the market today which we are I think not looking at. So from that perspective if you have anything to add on one point, very quick one point. So yeah, so you are right that I guess these are the technologies which should be adopted. But again, I again uh, will go back to my what I was discussing that planning phase is again going to be very critical because I believe that robotics it work pretty well. But if you haven't planned for that, and if your uh, modules or your, your structures are not level, I don't think it's going to work. So again, that has to be there in the planning stage. And again, so it ain't told that you need to again plan your buildings before uh, you put up your uh, PV project. So maybe you immediately not putting up your PV projects. Maybe you have plans to put it up after a few years. If you can plan that initially and dial in that factor, then you will be having at least the right setup uh, to ensure that you can have a good PV uh, plan uh, developed when you will be developing it. Um, just going back to your point about uh, getting cheap labor in India. Um, so going further as we expand capacity, uh, there is definitely going to be more requirement for maintenance. Uh, but there's also scope for generating more employment. So what I feel is that probably the answer is no for India in terms of full automation because it's going to take away a lot of jobs from the industry which is something that we're not prepared for. I think just to add, uh, rooftop is a very complex, it's a complex design process also. It's not saying that you would get only one area where you put all the panels. Now when you try to do robotic or you try to do something which is mechanical and the cost will increase because that thing is not going to fly over to the next room. You're going to have to create access or you're going to have to create a methodology where that happens. So on the rooftop it's deep. there is a severe set of challenges that need to be overcome for it to be a manless sort of operation. Ah, if you have a complete roof, 5 megawatt and all, then you can do all that planning it works. But a 100 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt, that, that's where the... I think I, think I have an anecdote here. So, uh, I think when, when we were 30 years ago, people used to feel that communication without a wire is almost impossible. And as we speak, there is a company called Airbrush, which is based out of Dubai. And 
what it has is it has a drone with a brush at the bottom. So the precise point that you said, it cannot jump off. Today people are working on making a solution which can actually jump from roof to roof yeah. and cleaning with, clean it with a drone. So there are a lot of crazy guys out there who are trying to do a lot of things which will add value. And it is these questions and these problems that actually will lead to innovation. And, and like everyone says, innovation is driven by two things. One, there has to be a problem. And second, there has to be laziness. If you're not lazy, we don't innovate. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, that's on, on the uh, operations side of it. With regards to asset management, unfortunately, it's, it's again been very streamlined where we have some central team which is taking care of asset management and monitoring the ONM. But, but I would like to check with the panel if anyone has any experience with asset management tools or any sort of, so, so there are a lot of asset management tools which are available and ERPs which are available. Any experience that you would have had on those? <coughs> One thing we are regarding the OEM is what we talk about. So the point, like, there is a technical point on that. Because OEM, once we talk about solar modules or solar plant, normally it comes to set in proposal also people used to put this maintenance free or zero maintenance. Or sometimes the OEM means this is only the cleaning of the modules. But apart from that, it, since last four to five years, specifically because earlier the major installations was in the cold region, especially in the Germany. But especially in the India, once the temperature is the 45, 49 degrees centigrade in Rajasthan, that is the annual temperature, that time the module temperature will be around the 80 degrees centigrade. So, uh, and because of that reason, because it's a high temperature, second is the, uh, having the high voltage, because nowadays the old system are being uh, designed in the range of the 1000 volt. Earlier it was a system of the off grid, this is the 300 volt system of that. So, because of this high potential, high uh, temperature, and the humidity level is high. Uh, so, for sure. So, there is, a, there is an issue because the OEM is also, it is because of this failure, I can say the improper, it may be because of the improper engineering sometimes. So, uh, specifically, there is a uh, effect the PID. Nowadays, I am just seeing people are replacing the modules because modules got failed, modules got degraded. Once we compare the challenges big in the rooftop, because once we compare with the uh, ground mounted system, there is a mechanism to nullify this effect. Basically, what the inverter manufacturer they are providing, they are providing a negative grounding kit. So, you are providing one sort of solution to nullify this effect. So, most of the modern, modern manufacturers they say, yes, you need to ground the negative pole of the DC so that you can basically be uh, prevent from the PID. But once it comes to the same module, if you are asking from the manufacturer, it was, should, I go, uh, should I have to be uh, ground the system on the negative ground? Then if it is a rooftop system, because the rooftop is the challenge, bigger challenge is specifically because most of the system we are using the string inverter. And string inverter having the transformers technology. And the technology particularly that doesn't allow the system to have the negative ground. So this is a challenge. So now this open challenge specifically because it's the same module we are having the grounding in the uh, large scale, but in the rooftop, earlier the SMM was providing the one PV offset the work type of solutions, but now it's also the out from the market. So this is also because once if it's the more module failure, then you have to replace it. It means you increase the OEM chart, uh, the, uh, the particular uh -huh. point of that. So with regards to asset management and remote monitoring, it's all about how powerful your monitoring solution is, whether it's regards to the data availability or the kind of KPI that it offers you, or like Mr. Ritesh was talking about a pipe being on a string and the string being down. If your data analytics is strong enough, there will be a pop-up with an SMS and the person on the site can immediately know there is a pipe on this string. It doesn't take, it's not too difficult, it's happening today. Uh, not just with Mahindra, but a lot of companies today are working on data analytics which can tell you exactly which module has an issue or which string has an issue. So I think that's, that's the third subject which can probably get us to that stage where ONM does not need people on the ground or ONM does not need manpower on the ground. So any thoughts on the latest trends? in monitoring or asset management or data analytics, we'll be happy to discuss.
anyone in the audience who would like to talk about this or has any prior experience on what are the different things that you think a remote monitoring solution can really do for you or any experiences with that? The floor is open and then immediately we'll get into the Q&A with Sir who's sitting on the first table. Data analytics is definitely very important because that is how we are going to get or generate data. Now we are talking about plants which are maybe what 200 million in fact. Now 650 megawatt plants as well. So we are going to generate a lot of data. But then how we are going to analyze the data and how we are going to actually use the data for the benefit of the industry. We talk about drones. Drones can maybe uh, give you the hot spot, the thermal profile of the modules, maybe 2 megawatts in 20 minutes. But then what you have learned from that data? How you are going to work on that and ensure that maybe in future projects you won't have similar issues. So that is what I believe that uh, we can focus on as well in trying to understand why we are having those issues and then what can be done to mitigate those issues in future. That is the point I would like to uh, make and then maybe have discussions around it. A valid point. I think the industry again here also is understanding the power of an RCA or the CAPA CAPA which is traditionally being used in all manufacturing industries. The root cause analysis and the corrective action, preventive action does precisely what you're saying is understand why the fault happened and how do we eliminate it from the part itself. So I think the industry is evolving with a detailed analysis of each breakdown, of each issue that occurs. Then you had something to do. Yeah, in fact, uh, just by listening to Rahul, uh, I thought in the interest of the community and the interest of the country, what we should also look at is how to have a knowledge sharing and a knowledge portal where you know the learning of a one developer of a large plant or maybe a small rooftop plant, how it is shared with the other uh, developers, other uh, IPPs. Uh, because if a certain combination of equipment did not work out, you know, and if somebody else knows that you know this was the reason why it did not work out, purely on the technical management, right? I mean, somebody else is going to uh, save a lot of time, money, energy, and a lot of undue risk uh, by knowing this uh, shared knowledge. Uh, secondly, on the uh, analytic side and the asset management, I think it's a more worry for the banks than the developers because the bank has 70 percent exposure on these plants. So, <laughs> so the banks really need to wake up on this uh, topic of asset management. <laughs> sure. So I think on an ending note uh, from our panel, I think technology has played an integral part in solar as an energy source to come around and, and technology is going to keep evolving as we speak. And like you rightly said, the lenders and the bankers are very aware of what technology is. If you tell the, when the lenders that you are using inverter A versus inverter B or you have EPC company A versus B or an ONM contractor B versus C, you will see the level of comfort changing. And, and this is across the world and the same thing will be seen in India. And as we speak, let's hope for the next year that we come back here and we move away from the copy paste culture that Mr. Ritesh was talking about and actually sit here and talk about innovations that Indian companies have done. Um, the floor is open for questions and we'll start with the gentleman sitting on the first round table, uh, the third third chair. Uh, next to you, Prasoon, if you could give him the mic. Now, what do you think I'm asking? First of all, you fought IC and Mahindra style. All, all of you are from the solar module. When the per square meter, what power is available, how much you are getting from solar side, first thing. Secondly, everything can get better when it is being done, as a matter of fact. Second thing, chicken is a good job first. When it is a good job, 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 when it is a good job. Solar plus a cell basically, photovoltaic or whatever it may be, is generating the power for the solar sun and photon. But there is no efficiency better than 80 to 20 percent. One square meter, 20 can get you 1 kilowatt. But we want 10 square feet for 1 kilowatt. All these things are there, which are the bottleneck for popularity of these things. Cost comes from the first part. So, if you have a lot of money, you can't get a lot of money. 
So I think to, to summarize what you are saying sir is um, we as the industry body needs to work together to bring down the cost and increase the efficiencies. Did I get you right? And, and it's our responsibility to ensure that and I think it's well noted and all of us are working towards it to make it more affordable, long lasting and at the same time convenient uh, to the local masses and for their usage. So we have another question here which is uh, from Major Charan. Uh, his question actually has four points which is lightning effects, getting earthing, negative earthing, positive earthing and lightning earthing. So I'm guessing you would like to understand what are the various types of earthing which are available and what's probably the best uh, to go forward. Okay, who would like to take that question? So basically once we talk, uh, talk about the particular purposes, we design the system uh, and we saw the power plant, especially the rooftop which we talk about that. that is the <coughs> First step thing is about the safety uh, for the time, grounding system, wherever the metal body is. Every equipment we need to earth it. So this is the one type of we call the equipment earthing, specifically. Second is generally already this being practiced by the various uh, EPC uh, the guy already the companies. That is related to the, you know, to secure the area from the lighting. So the lightning part is totally separate. Uh, specifically and we put the lighting arrester then we, lighting arrester will be putting the earth bit it will be grounded so the lightning arrester basically prevent the system from the lightning so these are totally separate earth thing so one is the equipment level this is a dc and another is a ac system is a separate earth thing and third earth thing what i was talking about that because specifically your panels are not ready free then definitely the, there should be some confirmation about that the how to do the negative pole which is the uh, DC side and this is also only possible mostly in the single MPPT uh, inverters not in the multiple MPPT systems. So there are three type of uh, grounding is going on in the specifically for the solar PV or plants. I, I found it a little um, confusing when the guys who are supposed to be the expert uh, say that automation as, as a solution leaving you I really like the way you actually handle the, the panel by saying that these are happening in Dubai or in America. But the people who are at the pinnacle of this industry and have this approach that uh, cleaning and robotics and egg roofs and dusre roof kaise jayenge, uh, how do we change the mindset? So, so people we look up to, if they do not change their mindset and say, okay, fine, let's pick up this challenge as as. Sir said, ki ek roof se dusre roof pe jana hai. we do have good institutions who can come up with some solution and we can always reach out to ISRO for that instance. ISRO might be doing something that, that could be mapped to the civilians, that's how America is going. NASA did something and we have it in, in, the, in the commercial line. Obviously it takes time, they will not give you the complete secrets. I think Viewpoint as a company has a lot of uh, innovations at different levels. Uh, I also know that industry has a lot of uh, loopholes that we can tap it, which we have not been tapping. But just by saying that this is what we have and we have to sustain with this, it's also wrong. So the approach has to be changed. Yeah, to, I, I think I take it. So my the point here is that these are the challenges that are there, and we need technical problems. Maybe that is, that will also come from outside. But Indian organizations also need to focus on the fact that how to solve this. Obviously, we know robotics at some point, I give an example of Charanka. Charanka where is, is actually a wind, I'm not sure everybody is aware, but Charanka solar park was at one time the largest solar park in India. Uh, it's a predominantly it was wind, which was converted to solar. Land there was almost free. 
and now you can't even buy land for 10 15 lakhs an acre and you can't you can't even find labor labor i mean there was such an unemployment problem that there was uh, i mean people were literally hungry over there but now you can't find labor there but that's my challenge from the beginning is what you said rather than doing cut and paste and we have like a, initially i also mentioned that our solar water processes the heating processes those are the ones that have done a lot of innovations but our pv the one that everybody is interested in they're doing gumbo about gigawatts and all of that that seen very little innovation and yes that point is very well taken and that's what we try to make from the start we need to start moving away this is like the it the bpo at one point in time it used to be where everybody used to just manually do the services and now now it's become an automation and now people are getting kicked out of jobs because of automation it's going to happen it's cycle is going to happen but the point is that how many people are you going to challenge if people okay with the status quo which is why i said in the beginning we are a copy paste i mean we are at the copy paste this thing we need to move to the next level uh, but sir as so as, the head, head, as the head of the, the decision makers have all the institutions and said this is what we are facing okay. can so, you, so this is not i'll give you an example so, our organization our organization we are amongst the best tracking technologies in the world okay. we have our own patent we are completely developed in india we completely the patent is india and global it's absolutely i mean we have independent studies where we are even ranked better than american companies in than in european companies we rank better than them our bearings are made in such a way that they have sustained for 100 years <laughs> we are also coming up with robotic cleaning so my point there is that we are coming up with robotic cleaning we are looking at trackers for rooftops we have we are the only organization in india that uh, in the world rather who will have two different technologies on trackers so my point is that we are coming from a technology but we don't see that and everywhere it's all about the fact price 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 it's only about price we are only talking about price we are not talking about innovation we are not talking about money for quality we are not talking about anything other than price which is where we are uh, we are stuck at a broken record because for me we are um, only five required So, so that to to sum up the answer, I think there is a learning curve, and and like the panelists have been mentioning that people will move forward. And to address your point, yes, there are companies who are partnering with the IITs, the NITs, the NITs for that matter. And it's just that it's not in the public domain because everyone wants to retain the differentiator. If I were to defend. uh the panel sitting here and the other companies it's probably just to create a differentiator till the time they are ready to launch the product in the market so uh we have about five questions here however the time that we have from the organization is uh one minute so what i'm going to do <laughs> is i'll just direct the questions to the panelists and maybe we can end this and during the networking tea you could talk to them directly so one of the questions for you tanya is from mr ashok nehra from infosim This question is hybrid inverters. How are they performing? And could you give a case study? So, if you could connect to Tanya post this uh, panel discussion, that there is one from Mr. Shiv Dev Singh. Please, sh- please show the Come effect up. of shadows over solar panels. Uh, how much lower will the efficiency of panels be? I think you could get in touch with either Gaurav or Somnath, who are our module experts and primarily it depends completely read further, on read further, the read for the read for the what will be the effect of 220 kv conductor wind turbine of 90 meter height two cases one is of conductor shadow and right. is of wind turbine of 90 meter right so what i would love to and light shadow yeah so dark and light shadow is also mentioned over here so you could get in touch with somnath or gorov and even i can discuss offline with you on the experiences we've had Uh, which shadowing and how we have tackled it uh, there's one question from mr sunny khanduja his question is sometimes investing in a technology is not a problem for the industry it is getting the onm services and getting the spares at a reasonable price for an important technology what is the warranty guarantee for these technologies uh, so mr khanduja i can answer these questions for you for the technologies that i mentioned and we can connect offline um there's one last question from mr bandeep singh we have discussed about modules but not much about solar string inverters which is supposed to be the heart of the pv system can we have a guideline for choosing a good solar inverter anyone else who would like to take this question 
so you could connect with somnath and i would like to help you with whatever knowledge i have in the existing plants that we have i think with that we'll close our panel discussion you've been an excellent audience i've never seen the audience stand up in the middle and ask for a course correction i think that was brilliant sir really respect that and i hope we've been able to live up to the topic just about a little i'm sure the next time we'll probably have more focus on technology and more focus on what the topic is thank you you've been a lovely audience I take this opportunity to present.